This is the Nordic Protector from the Czech company Skandinav Knives. I've had this knife for quite a few months now, and I'm ready to give you my thoughts on it. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Skandinav Knives for sending out the Nordic Protector so that I could share it with you. As I mentioned, I've had this for quite a number of months now. I actually introduced it in an unboxing video some time ago and uh, said I would be testing it. So I've been carrying it most of the winter when I haven't been carrying other knives that I've also been testing, but this is the knife I've carried most often. And uh, yeah, I've had it for quite a while. I've been able to form some opinions on it. It is uh, kind of a unique design to say the least. It has some advantages, but it does have a few disadvantages as well. So what I thought I would do is just bring the camera down so I could focus in on the knives, give you some specifications for the knives, talk about the design overall, and do a few demonstrations with it. All right, just before we focus in on the knife itself, let's just take a quick look at the sheath. So let me put the knife back in the sheath. And I mentioned this in the introductory video or the preview video, what a heavy duty sheath this is. Look at the thickness of the grain of that leather down the welt. See, it's starting to get a lot of wear on it from carrying it, of course. Really nice, nice, what do they call that? Ox blood stain on it, Scandinav's design embossed on the outside of it. Now, it is just a belt loop. I added this dangler because, well, of course, I do like them to hang below the uh, hip belt on my backpack, so that wasn't something that came with it. Maybe with a little encouragement, Scandinavs will offer some type of a dangler attachment for their knives. Fits in nicely. Now, one thing about the sheath I'll say right up front, and it caused me a little bit of concern when it first arrived, nothing to do with the quality, but the design. Now, it does fit the knife. As you can see, it fits the knife. I'm not going to shake it upside down because it'll probably come out, but it is secure. It has a bit of snap and hold on it. But here's what I found in when I first got it. It took a bit of getting used to it. If you're used to just kind of driving a knife down inside, well, not driving it, but placing it down inside of your sheath, then, uh, and you do that with this knife, you may end up actually poking the side of the sheath with it. So you kind of have to come down at an angle for it to go in properly. Very quickly, I got used to that. I don't even think about it anymore, but it's kind of a turn as you go into the sheath so that you don't drive the tip into the leather at the bottom. And I was, like I mentioned, concerned because I did that the first couple times until I got used to it. All right, let's take the sheath and put it out of the way. Bring the knife back in. I'll quickly go over the specifications for this knife, but of course it will be in the video description as well. Total length from pommel to tip is 10.25 inches, which is 260 millimeters. The blank length from tip to where it goes to on the, the hilt itself is five inches, 130 millimeters. The handle length, 4.9 inches, 125 millimeters. Blade thickness, just under five millimeters at 4.45 millimeters or 0.175 of an inch thick. So it is full tank construction, as you can see, of course. Uh, all right, so that is the basic design or the basic specs for the knife. Now let's just go into the design a little bit. So the thing that obviously stands out is this. What is this all about? So for those of you who didn't see that unboxing video, this is a Sax, S-E-A-X design. This is a Nordic designed knife based on the historic broke back Sax design. Now, of interest, I did some research into this, the history of this design, and there's some debate whether it was actually used by the Vikings or the Dutch or any of the uh, people of the Nordic descent. It may have actually started in England, of all places, so because that's where they found a historic piece of it. Now, I, I, I'm not opening up a can of worms with this, or I'm not trying to open up a can of worms with it, but it, it has become synonymous with the sacks to have this broke back design coming down to a point here. So that's the basic design of it. I like it. It works and it's different to say the least. Now a few things about it. The blade as you can see in this case is a high saber. They refer to this flat with a groove and you can understand why it's not. It's almost a full flat grind with a groove running just down from the top of it. The blade is stone washed. I don't think I mentioned the steel is 14C 28 N, and it's been hardened to 60 or plus or minus one on the Rockwell scale. So they've got it pretty good and hard and it's kept its edge. We'll talk more about that in a moment. So it, as I mentioned, it is stone washed finish on it. Now, a few things about this. This knife is available in two basic design. This high saber or flat, full flat with a groove as they call it, and a Scandi, just the lower portion for a zero grind Scandi. 
I chose the full flat because I like the slicing capabilities of this type of a knife, but I did give up some strength in doing so. And this is something that the company wanted to make sure I understood is that because I chose the full flat, let me see if I can show it in this direction. Look at the tip. Now, it's not super fragile, but they warned me don't drive this into things. Don't stab with it. Don't poke into things and pry with it. That's okay. I wasn't going to do that anyway with this design because that's not the way I use knives. But they just made a point that if you want to have more strength in the tip, choose the Scandinavian grind knife and you'll have more thickness out towards the tip, making it stronger for those types of tasks. The other thing about this design, the full flat over the Scandi grind, is the spine itself. It's not flat. It is actually angled with two angles on either side. That means it will not scrape anything. It won't scrape a ferrocerium rod, it won't scrape bark, it won't scrape fat wood, it won't scrape anything at all. That can be considered a downside. However, if you choose the Scandi version, you will have a full flat spine, a very sharp flat spine. My friend Jeff Allen at Off the Gridiron on YouTube has the other version of this and he demonstrated using it and it works exactly the way you want a bushcraft knife to use. Did I choose wrong? I don't know. I, I really like the fact that this is so slicey, but I did have to give up that. Could I rect rectify it? Yeah, I probably could. I just don't know that I will. For one, it'll change the looks of the knife, but two, there is an advantage to having a spine like that. It is so much easier on your thumb here, on your finger here, if you're using the edge and leaving it off of your other thumb, this won't give you hot spots on your fingers at all. You just give up the scraping ability. So if you have another tool that will do that, then of course, then you're okay. So let's just move down. As you can see, first off, before we uh, move on from the blade, there is a slight curve towards the tip. And I was very happy to see that. In fact, the blade is a little bit thicker here than it is here. So it's, it really doesn't change the weight dynamic too much because of course, very quickly, it, uh, the weight disappears off of the end. But it does change the slicing. If it had been a full flat all the way out, it would not be as slicey as it is. But with that little bit of a curve, moving it through wood and or meat or anything else, it retains quite a bit of sliciness. I use this in the kitchen and I, as I do with any knife appropriate for that. And this is a quite a good meal preparation for vegetables, meat, or just about anything else. It actually, you still, because of that curve up front, you can still rock the knife a little bit on a cutting board to make it work. It actually works quite well. Small sharpness. Sharp sharpening choil just behind a small guard here. The handles are G10. They call it Nordic Woods. Kind of an interesting pattern all over, as you can see. It's just right through. It is smooth, not super slick, but it is smooth, pretty slick, I guess we'll say. And the spine all the way down the back is proud, meaning it's raised above. It's not flush with the G10 scales on either side. So you can feel it. You know, that's a design feature. It really has nothing, no impact on the performance of it at all. It's just a way of making the knife look a little different, maybe a little bit classier. And uh, yeah, that's one thing I can say about this knife. Fit and finish are just outstanding. There's a lot of time taken to getting this to look just perfect. There is no misfitted screws or anything else. You can see the name Scandinoff right down there on the bottom, on the base right there. Lanyard loop here, small piece of paracord, of course, and the screws are out, or the bolts are Allen, both sides, so you could remove the handles if you need to for maintenance or tightening or anything else, I guess. They are sculptured, or I don't know if I can say, it's not truly a Coke bottle, but there is a flare in the center, so there is a palm swell here, and, but there's not so much a palm swell here. Now, something to take note of is the angle of the handle in relationship to the blade. It is curves or it, it angles forward. So if I'm holding my hand straight, the tip of the blade is downward in nature. That's intentional, of course, because that provides extra slicing motion anatomically with your hand in the correct position. It captures more material as you run down a piece of wood or anything else. Little spiders, can you imagine? It's getting that time of year, right? Uh, yeah, runs down the material. So it, uh, it is a nice feature to have on the knife. Few comments before I get into the demonstrations are, it fits my hand mostly. And as you know, I have XL hands to double XL hands. Mostly I say because I actually find it a little thin through here. I would 
really like if it was just a little bit thicker all the way along. And I can feel it over time. I mean, it is long enough, but as I grab onto it, it feels good now. But as I carve with it, I start to strain for holding on to it. You can see my knuckles get a little white just holding on to it, even just in this demonstration. Okay, that's the design of the knife. But more importantly is, what does it perform like? Well, let's do a few demonstrations. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to do any scraping, but I can do some batoning within reason, and I can do some feather sticking and some notching, so let's do that. All right, I have a piece of, ooh, I think this might be oak. I don't know for sure until I split it out. I think it is oak. It's about 11, no, what am I talking about? 13, 14 inches in length and two, two and a quarter inches in diameter. It is old, but what quality is a big knot at that end. I'm gonna try and miss that. So as I mentioned, I was warned not to hit the tip or not to poke the tip, but it's not that fragile. I don't want you to think that it's so fragile you have to baby the knife. All right, that worked out pretty good. What have we got? Oh, it is sugar maple. Yeah, it is sugar maple. Okay, that's good. I'm glad to see that. Oak is a lot harder to feather. You can see it's kind of curved down here, but that's okay. Uh, one thing I'm going to say about it is, is because it's a full flat and not a Scandi, it's a little harder to baton through because the wood wants to grab the blade as it goes up. With a Scandi, it acts more like a wedge and opens it up quicker. All right, so I've got my two halves here. I'm going to baton the rest, those other two, the, those two halves down into a number of splits, one of which I'll turn into a tent peg, and another one I will do some feather sticking with it. So I'll do that off camera. Very quickly, I'm going to turn this one of the splits into a tent peg. And again, I say this often, that the reason why I choose a tent peg as opposed to anything else to carve into this is because it, demonstra it demonstrates or at least tests two skills or two types of performance you expect from your knives. One is to create a notch, obviously a notch for the tent peg, but then notch will be representative of any number of notches you may want to make for any variety of reasons and of course i'll be putting a point on the other end of this so let's start with the notch so i'm doing cross batoning here i'm just creating my stop cut so i'm about a little bit more than a third of the way down through the wood and this is where you start to appreciate the spine being a little bit rounded not a little bit a whole lot rounded i guess And you can also appreciate this point on this because it does a nice job of getting into there. So there is my notch. Now let me set up and I'll put a point on the other end. And again, the point of putting a point, if you will, on a tent peg is to test how comfortable it is in the reverse grip for doing tasks like this. Because in the reverse grip, I can use the chest lever, get a lot of strength out of my back muscles, and hopefully move through the wood very quickly and very efficiently. So let's try it. I will tell you that's hard wood, but it is doing what I want it. Come around, and that is hard wood, dry maple. But the knife is big, deep, digging in. Probably call it quits here. Let's just put a real point on it though. Like that, all right. So there's the point. Now I have another split about the same size that we'll do a little feather sticking with. All right, so I chose one of the splits off of that piece of wood. Looks pretty good. Not really straight, but the grain is straight even if the split isn't. So this should work out pretty good as long as the wood is of good quality. It is sugar maple, which means it can be a little hard at time to curve. So, so full flat grind as opposed to a Scandi grind can be a little bit different. No, it can be a whole lot different. It really depends on the knife itself. But you have to raise the knife until the edge starts to bite in and find where that bite is. And that's where you work with it. So this one's a little bit harder than some knives, but let's see. If you find the angle... then it will do the job. And finding the angle is as much about experience with the knife itself. 
as it is anything else. That is hard wood though. I'm able to make some pretty fine curls with it. Just not very long, but that's my fault, not the knife. I didn't start back far enough. So running the knife down straight will produce a curl. Running it at an angle will produce usually a finer curly curl like that. Either angle, if I run in this direction, then the curl will go in one opposite the where my hand is, I guess you can say. If I go in the other way, it goes the other direction. Boy, that is hard wood. Okay, it'll feather. I didn't create long feathers, but I've created some nice fine feathers with it. So that's all the demonstrations I can do with this knife because it, it lacks that sharp spine. But based on what I've done and demonstrated, I can wrap this video up. All right, a few closing thoughts for the Nordic Protector from the Czech company, Skandinav. So let's start with the positives. Number one, I did mention this is made from 14C28N stainless steel, and that is known to be a good quality stainless steel for an outdoor knife because it is just above entry level. It's not a super steel, but it has a lot of the qualities that a super steel has. It can be hardened up, well, in this case, to 61 on the Rockwell scale and still retain a lot of its toughness and edge hold which is sometimes in conflict with each other. This knife has stayed sharp through the entire time I've had it. Yes, I did do a little bit of running it down a ceramic rod and stropping it, but I have had no chips, no rolls, and nothing that had caused me to want to put it on stones to bring the edge back. As I always say, it's easier and better to keep your knife sharp than it is to sharpen a dull knife. So that's one of the positives, definitely is the steel overall fit and finish on this knife is just outstanding. It is just top quality, top notch. There is nothing anywhere that would cause you to think that there was a miss in when they put it together. Very well built for sure. Good looking. I, you know, that G10, that's interesting. Very interesting. Very good looking. Uh, different. I don't think I've seen it on any other knives, but of course that's only part of it. The overall design is very Nice, I'm going to say. It fits that Nordic theme of being a sax with all its functionality. It does have a few strong points for the sax design. One, it does end up in a very fine point, which has made it great for carving. By the way, one of the things is draw cuts. If you're drawing it across, well, meat or vegetables, but also bark or anything else that you're trying to cut through when holding it, that, that edge really performs well. The slight curve, and it is actually continuous all the way, actually does well to aid in the slicing along with the fact that it is pretty much a full flat grime. Um, yeah, now there is a, f a thing about using a broke back sax design like this when it comes to carving. If you're cutting into wood and you're using your thumb to lever off of, it's a little bit more awkward when you use your thumb up here than it is if you can use it up on the spine. You get a little bit more leverage up on the spine, but you get a little bit more control if you go down to the point. But look at that point. That is all about carving, and it does. It excels for that notching and the things like that that I have done with it, getting into corners and things. It works really well for that. Uh, I like the fact that it has the angle to the grip, which again aids in the cutting because it puts the blade in a forward cant, if you will, when you're holding it in a natural orientation. So it does aid in the slicing. Now, there's a few things about it I'd love to see improved. I would love it to be just a tiny bit wider. Now, that's me, of course, but the other thing is here. I just think it's a little bit too narrow or too not tall enough right through here. As a result, it's almost the same dimension through here as it is through here. And when that happens and you're holding it up front, it can want to roll. If you're moving the knife like this, you can feel the knife want to roll a little bit, a little bit thicker. My preference has always been to have greater height this way from spine to the bottom than it is width. And then you've got something that will resist rolling in your hands. Not uncomfortable using it in a reverse grip. I don't think this was a part of the design intent with this knife to be able to use it in reverse grip. It doesn't have a thumb scallop, but it's still not uncomfortable. And again, the pommel, even though it is metal right here, is not uncomfortable either because it's been rounded and, and contoured and chamfered all the way around. So yeah, it's overall a nice, comfortable knife to use. 
stone wash finish, very attractive. Um, this is probably going to be a deal breaker for some people, and that is the fact that it does not have a flat, sharp, 90 degree spine on it. But as I mentioned, if that's important to you, then go with the other version of this knife, the one that has the Scandi ground as opposed to the full flat, and you'll have probably the best of all worlds there. It still comes down to the grip. It's a little slippery, by the way. It's a little, it's not slippery. You can probably hear my fingers on it. It's kind of a bit of traction aim, so it's not super glossy, but it is, it could be a little bit more traction on it. Okay. If nothing else, a unique, good looking, well built knife, but I think its applications are a limit, little bit limited, at least in the full flat grind. Super slicey, but it doesn't have that flat spine on top. And I'm, I know I'm repeating myself. I just wanted to make that clear for people. Okay. That's everything I'm going to say about this knife. I like it. I've been carrying it. I really like the sheath. It carries well on my belt. It's easy to use. I love the point on this. And yeah, again, that's all I'm going to say. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section below. All the specification and the links to where you can take another look at it. Two places, actually. I'll give you the company link at Scandinav in the Czech Republic. But I'm also going to give you a link to Bushcraft Canada, who is the Canadian distributor for these knives. If you're interested in pricing them out and seeing if it's something that uh, you'd be interested in purchasing for yourself. Okay, until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.